Thanks for tuning in to the Jake Young Alaska YouTube channel. I'm here to offer some clarity into what the channel is going to be about, where we're going, where we came from, and what's happening. What's happening here? I'm going to explain. So the channel, the last three episodes, I've had some endurance sports activities. I plan on adding art reviewing, art creation, novel reading, short story readings, and podcast interviews, all with the intent of capturing my life in Alaska and how I'm inspired by being here and how it all filters back into creating art. So again, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm excited to start getting into this art. It's not really art review, it's my own art. It's art. It's, it's the stories behind the art. It's all about the art, like I was saying earlier. It's all coming down to taking all these world life experiences and putting them on the canvas and then in the process of being on the canvas finding more stillness and going back out into the world it's like a two-way street so this painting i've got a nice pointer stick somewhere here i want to have my big fat hand i need the laser pointer but this aluminum thing should be pretty good so two years ago i was doing lots of iron man triathlon training on my bike and i just forced myself to go to the store one day to buy some paint and a canvas. I'm just going to start putting out something. At the time, that's what I was thinking about. Uh, so you can see I have a little bike wheel going on here, and I'm like thinking about the power of like pedaling down the thing and like going with the thing, and I'm blasting through the air. This was my thoughts. I'm like, this is something. I started it and got going on it, and I don't recall if I finished the entire thing as such. I may have gotten 90% through it, and I was like, yeah, I was kind of not really feeling inspiration. I kind of was like, yeah, this is cheesy. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? You know, I made the first hard step of just doing it. But then I was like, second, I'm like, this is dumb. So then I randomly was like, looking at it, I was like, ah, oh, what is this thing? Does this mean something else? Because it's obviously very abstract, whatever's going on here. And then I turned it this way, and I was like, whoa. I had inadvertently this thing even level. I inadvertently created this horizon line and then this thing standing here that looks like it's kind of on fire and it's like this blazing stuff going off this way. It's like the wind blowing across the desert. I was like, whoa, what's this? Like I kind of accidentally made it and I thought it was cool. Second backstory is at the exact same time I was in the middle of at the tail end of finishing a giant uh, construction project. I was the acting superintendent for like a three million dollar helicopter hangar and I, I had a lot on my mind in terms of multitasking organizing phone calls workers on the field you know workers in the field how to do this how to do that and i realized like oh my god i've just created this multitasking that's what the title of this one is it's called multitasking and it's a helicopter hanger so these kind of these were the helicopter hanger blades or not these were the helicopter rotors as they're kind of spinning. This was like my brain getting sliced off in chunks, like a cross section of my brain. All these little dots were the random pinpoints of information that had to be fed into the fire and then like blazed out and become something. So this painting to me represents the tail end of like the stress and the ultimate success of the project. Uh, like it was insane. I was deep in it. It was the biggest project I've ever done in the world of construction. And that's what it is, and it's. And I was done, and I walked away. I was like, okay, great. So, on to the next one. So, this was the actual second painting I ever did, and just to clarify, as I go through all of these, I'm not necessarily going in a hard chronological order. I've kind of got them grouped in by sections or periods, if you will, uh, kind of as I was changing new techniques and new ideas, and um, this one at this right as I was finishing that construction project I had mentioned and the creation of multitasking a good friend of mine was uh, I had found out he had passed away so it was kind of a bummer and I thought back to you know the earliest inspiration I could in terms of like my skiing career and you know, it all came back to this was the very first backcountry run I ever did with my friend Abe. So this is called Little O'Malley Peak. This is Anchorage. Anchorage is over here. Big O'Malley Peak. This is Little O'Malley Peak as if you'd see it from Flat Hop. 
and then these are tracks, you know, Abe's tracks kind of ending down here. Uh, yeah, it was very sad time, but very, you know, I had to draw one of the inspirations, and Abe was my number one ski partner for years and years. And so that was just what I did. I was inspired. I was like, oh gosh, I gotta, you know, painting was very new to me at the time, so I was, I was like, what do I know? I know mountains and skiing, and like my friend's dead, so that's what I'll try painting. So that is Little O'Malley Peak. I am in Alaska, and I love Alaska, and I, uh, I've been here forever, and ever and ever, but I've spent a lot of time in Hawaii, and I've drawn a lot of inspiration from that. This picture specifically represents the final scene of a novel I wrote, and it's just titled Eyeball and Period, or I'm sorry, it's called Eyeball and Pyramid. And I won't, don't want to give away the book, and I'll actually be reading the entire book here later on this very channel. I'll be going through chapter by chapter. So as you see this picture, I'll probably show it again later as we get closer to the final conclusion of the novel, however far down the way. This is the final scene. There's an eyeball in a period doing something, like what's happening? These are little palm trees. Um, looking back at these first couple, it's very, my technique is very rudimentary, mostly drawing style, I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, I'm kind of going on broad abstract ideas, you know, you can get away with an abstract idea and call it something short of like some short, I mean shortcomings technically, basically, and that's what I've kind of leaned on. Uh, so yes, eyeball and pyramid, fire blasting out the top, what's happening here, and we'll probably, we'll explain this one later through an entire novel. Stay tuned. If you're curious about this entire novel, hit the subscribe button below, hit the like button, because there's lots more coming your way. So this painting is called Digital, uh, I think it was Lone Figure and Digital Sun, or Digital Sun and Lone Figure, and I just had this, uh, I was thinking of technology, with the digital sun, you know, and this lone person, like, I don't know, I was trying to convey my own loneliness, maybe, I don't know, but more, more as the individuals are broken up into technology, i.e. social media, etc., they become drawn to it, you know, and it's this, it's a facsimile of the sun, it's digital rendering of the sun, as it's casting a shadow, but he's still, he's like in this desolate, you know, it just seems, it's like, not good necessarily, and the guy looks lonely, and I think that's just kind of what's happening in the world right now. I did this pre-COVID, pre-lockdown, but already, you know, social media has obviously been taking it's toll on society, I guess on traditional society, it's evolving obviously in new directions, some good, some bad. Uh, this was just a thought on that. Digital Sun, as you'll see, will be moving on that theme here shortly. Lone Figure, Digital Sun. What the hell is this one called? This one is called Lone Figures. I did it immediately after the previous one, Lone Figure Digital Sun. This one's slightly different theme. You know, we have more than one person, but they're all kind of, looks like they're traveling in a line. There's no sun casting a shadow, but they appear to be heading towards those mountains over there. I don't know if the mountains are good. I always. You know, mountains to me are always good. I've been a diehard skier forever, my entire life, so they've always been this good thing. So, and I always, as a skier, in my more, uh, I guess, cynical youth, I would see people who were uh, apparently sad or distraught the way that, with their lives were going, and I just was like, if they only just knew what skiing was, and you could be here in the mountains and sense and taste the freedom of what it has to offer, why would you ever be sad? So, that's what I was thinking. 
so we have these lone people, but there's still people, it's just about people trying to find something. And there's hope in that there's at least more than one of them, but at the same time they're all traveling separately. Do they know where they're all going to the same place? We don't know. Uh, it is a sense, a slight sense of depression, because uh, it's like a hot desert, but it's towards sunset, or it could be towards sunrise, who knows, it's kind of got sunset sort of feel. Uh, and the mountains are just very simple, this is actually just Sharpie, I just penciled them in, you know, I did a whitewash, well I haven't really been talking about technique, I guess we'll be doing that more, but I just washed in some color, drew a straight horizon, and then little mountains, and got some people. What's next? Aha! Dark Pyramid and Digital Eyeball is next in line. So here are people. They've now traveled across somewhere. They've got some, there's some forest, some sparse forest here. This multicolored, the digital sun now has morphed into a digital eyeball. Hence the name of the digital eyeball period, which we are diving into. In the background, we have this digital pyramid with various colors on it. And you can see these little people with this like projector like glow kind of drawing them in. They're still kind of they're still traveling alone. But they're being drawn to this eyeball. I don't know why. What are they doing? Is it the digital the digital era drawing society to a cliff? Or maybe a lifting place of some sort. It's a little more spooky, so it means that other one was nighttime. This is, or it was uh, sunset. This is now getting towards night. Holy cow! What is going on here? So now we have a giant digital eyeball. Here's the same people who have been kind of just migrating across the desert, they don't know why they're going, and here's the pyramid. It's not, I don't know if it's the same pyramid from Dark Pyramid, but it's a pyramid. And they are being drawn up into the air. These little specks are being drawn into the eyeball. Look at these little people floating up in here. This painting is the cover of the novel I previously mentioned. That other little painting was the very end scene of that novel. This is the cover of that novel and that represents a traditional Hawaiian, I guess, mythology about, uh, it's called the Lifting Places, and it's basically about how if spirits, someone dies, you know, someone dies in the Hawaiian Islands and then they're not properly put to rest or they've got unfinished business, you know, they're a ghost, so to speak, and if they're not properly, they have lifting places to be put back to the stars. If that process of lifting place is not done correctly, they end up staying on Earth, and they, and those spirits are then known as nightwalkers, and they can be problematic for the humans. So, this is the cover of the book. The book is called Starlight Over David. Uh, I will be reading that entire book, so stay tuned for that. But this is the cover of that book. So we've got some pyramid references, we've got some Hawaiian mythology references. The digital eyeball is still, you know, I try to tie in like ancient mythology with like contemporary social media as the people are drawn, you know, to these artificial lifting places I guess within their daily lives. Do they know what they're doing and what they're going like a lot of people do or don't? In this case I'm trying to this case being the creation of this channel, I'm trying to wrangle some control back from technology and back from the internet. And instead of being a one of these zombie folks or whoever they are getting sucked into it blindly, I'm trying to take control of it and use it for good. Um, yeah, I like this one. It's kind of a sunrise, you know, we went to the dark, we had the people being drawn. We had the dark, scary pyramid, but the dark eyeball, but now they're being drawn up. Like, maybe this is good. You want to be up in the eyeball. Like, you want to be on the internet. You don't want to be left behind when uh, the internet is no longer an emerging technology, but it becomes a dominant technology. It's kind of like that book, Ready Player One, where the real world sucks. 
and everyone lives on the internet, and it's not that say that I technically want to live on the internet, uh, but it's just a theme that one could imbue on this painting. <clears throat> Holy cow, more digital eyeballs. These ones, so this painting specifically, uh, not to go too far off the deep end, but it was a dream, it was an obvious weird dream I had. I was like, oh my god, I'm going to paint that. But in the dream specifically, it was like, yeah, these UFOs were flying down over here. And I was up on the hillside, and it was a steep valley, you can see this town down here. And I just had the, I mean, I like to think it's Norway for some reason, just because these mountains back here kind of have that Norwegian shape. Uh, but these digital eyeballs now are chasing the aliens and blowing them up with laser vision. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if the eyeballs are good, maybe. I mean, this guy's got blue eyes, I got blue eyes, is that me? Uh, could be. And later, so this is the last painting for this, um, this video. We'll get into more eyeballs as it evolves, so the eyeball kind of becomes the observer. It's like, like I said, the art in general is a, at times it's a one-way street, sometimes it's a two-way street. Um, yeah, this one was interesting. It outlined the mountains, but then I intentionally like blurred the colors out the lines, so it kind of just all blurs like dream state. I really had fun. And this is one of the first ones, I shouldn't say the first, but just getting to more tactics and techniques as my painting has evolved is trying to, I really just like to think about depth perception. Like you have your color, but trying to keep create a depth of field. And this one was fun trying to keep like I'm looking down on this valley, but then this mountain's back over here. Like, what's going on here? And you know, and it really reminds me, it's so funny how painting it's such a uh it's, it's its own activity, but I'm a construction person. I've worked in construction building things for years now. It's my professional job until this YouTube channel takes off because I'd rather not be doing construction in all honesty. But my point is that painting reminds me of the process. You have to lay down a foundation and then walls and then you put in utilities and then you put on the siding, you put on a roof, whichever order there is to build a building. Uh, you probably put on the roof before the siding, but who knows. In this case, you know, you're, you know, you start at the back and you come your way forward and it seems super basic to say it, but it's hard or it has been hard to like do it like anything. Um, so yes, this is the last painting of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is what I do eight. I think I did seven or eight. I've got about 70 paintings now. So as the channel continues, I'm going to alternate between extreme action sports in the mountains and the forest with extreme endurance sports, which I hope you've enjoyed, KO and chasing on Strava, etc. But I'm going to break it up with taking a breath, breathing in the art, thinking about what it all means, how to put it on the canvas, how to create that stillness and take it back to the mountains. And then I'm going to throw in some podcast interviews with some friends I've already got lined up, where we might debate fun things like politics and religion and that sort of thing, super fun, contentious items, discussing what is or is not racist these days. Those sort are of things, but I don't want to talk about it right now. That's offensive. <laughs> so I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm having fun already by myself in my basement, as you can tell. My hair combed over and my shirt, but I've not been wearing any pants this whole time, so it's made it more fun. So hit that subscribe button below, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.